Hey everyone, um, before I get started in this video, I just want to say thank you to everyone who has um, contributed to the understanding of Stan Meyer's work over the years. It's probably been 10 to 12 years for some of us. We've been on the forums for that long, um, sharing our thoughts and our ideas and our designs, our calculations. Uh, people have found Stan's estate and shared their pictures, uh, their measurements from there, which has helped probably more than anything. Um, but overall, the contributions of all of us, I think, are really what's going to solve these problems. So, thank you everyone. And we'll get into this. What I want to share today is the VIC design and a replication um, that a few people have had success with. So, here's my little parts list. The core is a UY1658. Obviously, you need two pairs of these, one for the primary and secondary, one for the chokes, and they can be separate. They still work the same way. Uh, the one problem with this, and I'll get into later, is because of the material it's made out of and the area, the size of it, it has a really high AL value. Uh, that basically means if you're to wind the same number of turns that Stan had and put them on this core, you're going to have an inductance probably five or six times higher than you're supposed to and because of that you're going to have to gap it uh, introduce a gap in the core. I'll explain how to do that in a minute. Um, On to the bobbins. Cosmo Corp is the company I got these from and I just requested a sample and they gave me a few. I think I had to pay shipping but that was it. Part number is 1613-0 and if you look at this is a drawing somebody put on the forum of Stan's original uh, dimensions of his bobbins. The equivalent inner diameter is 0.658 inches. Now here's the Cosmo Corp core diameter 0.641. That's pretty close there. And then the length is 1.315. And here on these you got 1.312. So they're really close, really close. Um, I spent a couple hours trying to find some as close as I could. Uh, to stand size equivalent and that's them so the next thing is the wire it's a 29 gauge heavy build you need about 3,000 feet of it um, a lot of people early on we all thought it was 30 gauge wire until uh, somebody out there you know who you are thank you um, realized that well hey if we just do basic ohms law here we've got 12 volts on a 10.5 ohm coil we're going to pull this amount of current through it and 29 gauge is the the minimum wire size that can handle that current so back to the core here's the core again what I do to gap it I just use plastic washers and I've got them marked L1 and L2 for the chokes uh, just put some sandpaper down on the table and I'll just sand them down put them in there and then put my coils on my bobbins with the coils take the measurement you know make sure that it's held together tightly and take it back off and keep doing that until they're right it takes a little bit of work but it's not too bad um, there's another core out there I think it's a 3C90 that might be equivalent to this uh, made by Ferox Cube Ferro Cube I'm not sure how to pronounce it um, but theirs has holes here, so you could actually put a threaded rod through it. That'd be easier to clamp everything down to. Um, here you see my coils. I've got my primary, secondary. I think, uh, let's see, that's L1, that's L2. There's my diode down there. And this is a pickup coil I just used to make sure I was getting a good square wave on the primary. That's not necessary anymore. Uh, there's my 220 ohm 5 watt resistor. Obviously, this isn't connected right now, but uh, I put them all in this metal box. It's got a ground on the back side of it. It's also got a lid there. But what else? Diodes, a 1560. And I think that's it. More to come. Oh, there was one other thing. This is a little ferrite bead. I forget the exact 
terminology for it. It's made by TDK. Um, it's basically an inductor, and then even without the wire on it, it's, it's called a ferret inductor. So you can take some small gauge magnet wire, 29, 30 gauge, whatever, wind it around there, and then I put a high ohm resistor, I think that's a 10 meg or something, and then uh, just one wire, you can also do a diode and attach a ground to it if you want for the oscilloscope. But I use that as my pickup coil to watch my frequencies, that way I'm not exposing my oscilloscope to high voltages. And then inside of here, if I can open it with one hand, what I did, I just used hot glue to fill up the gap. So that way when I come in here and clamp it on one of my wires, that fits tightly. Let's see. Just like that. So those are good to use as well. You can get them super cheap. Um, I've got a couple here, they're all the same basically. I don't know what size they are. I don't think there is a part number on it. But that's all I got for now. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.